Hey friend, I'm Robin May and a few of the professional hats that I wear includes being a transformational speaker, a life coach, and a licensed therapist. And personally, well, I'm a wife, a mommy to three girls, and a pastor's wife, just to name a few. Girl, I'm over here doing all the things while trying to stay in shape and keep my skin clear. But the truth is, I don't want to be known for being busy. I think that's a scheme that somebody set up. No, I want to be known for living a life that is in perfect alignment with what God intended. And I want to help you do the same. So it's with that in mind, I'd like to welcome you right here to Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. Over here, we're creating a safe space to have real conversations with real women on real topics. This is a judgment-free zone where we can be vulnerable and honest and curious about our lives so that we can elevate not just what we do, but who we are. So if any of that resonates with you, again, welcome to our safe space. This is Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. Hey, sis, one more thing before we get started. Listen, a few years ago, I started asking women to define what happiness means to them. And when I tell you, I was shocked how hard it was for women to put into words their happiness. And the truth is, I could relate to it, girl. Life can sometimes get so crazy that it's hard to be clear on what happiness looks like and feels like to you. And so with that in mind, I created the absolutely free five-day Define Your Happy Challenge. I am on a mission to help 1,000 women define their happy. So if you're ready to get clear about what makes you happy, head on over to defineyourhappy.com. Okay, that's it for real now, y'all. Let's get started with this week's episode. Well, welcome back, sis. Welcome back to another episode of Intentional Conversations with Robin May. And friends, Tori, I don't know why. I always feel like I got a highlight. And friends, <laughs> I'm so excited. As you can see, I have a friend here. I have my girl, Dr. Tori here. But before I allow her to introduce herself, I want to remind you, if you're watching this on YouTube, hey, can you please comment so that it can move up the algorithm? If you are watching this on your favorite podcast app, if you can leave a review, give me all the stars, honey, I have a goal. I'm trying to move this podcast on up the list. And so if you are a supporter of all things Robin May, if this conversation is blessing you, mm -hmm. I want you to support me so that we can amplify this conversation. Again, this is Intentional Conversations with Robin May and Friends. And as you know, we have started off our podcast with a topic. And Tori, let me give you the topic. I think I handed it to you. I might have given it to you directly. Our topic is this, motherhood martyrs and mental health. Mm. Girl, I know. And actually, you helped me with the idea. You didn't even realize it with the idea of this. And I'm going to talk about this in just a minute. But I want to dive into this conversation. As you know, by now, we are talking all things motherhood. We are talking about this mindset moms have of being martyrs. Just, I'm a die to myself. I'm not going to do anything I love. I'm just going to focus only on my children mm. and mental health. And she and I, we're about to get into that part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And so I want you to remember, if you are not a mom, this conversation is still for you. Yes. Because Tori and I are going to get into the reality of your relationship with your mother mm -hmm. has a direct impact on how you show up, how how you express love, how you connect with other women. So we're going to talk about that. We got so much to talk about, mm -hmm. but I want you to introduce yourself first. This is my girl. Y'all, this is my, I told y'all, these are my real life girlfriends. This is my girl. This is my colleague. And so can you share a little bit about your profession? How many children you have? Just mm. tell your story, girl. Well, first of all, hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me, Rob. I always love when, when we get together, we we have such great synergy. I Girl, just love and it. listen, we could hardly start it. the podcast because we were <laughs> chat, already catching up. Yes. Um, I am a native of Atlanta. I have two practices here. I am a psychotherapist, speaker, and author. I'm trying to be like Robin. I'm trying to be a big girl. Um, I have been specializing in cognitive behavioral therapy and mindfulness practices in the Atlanta area for a good 15, 16 years now. Mm -hmm. My location is Vinings now. I used to be in Decatur and Buckhead. Now I'm in Vinings post-pandemic. And I love to work with women. I work with 
everybody, yes. but the majority of my clientele are women between the ages of 19 and probably 60 years old. And just working and helping people understand how to be a better version of themselves and to really work on mindfully accepting what life offers you. That's where I am. Right Wait now. a minute. So we got to go ahead and break that down. First of all, you still got to tell us about your children. Mm -hmm. But before we do, I told you, we just are having conversation two girlfriends chatting and you are participating in the conversation. Help us understand what you mean, mindfully accepting what life brings to you. Cause that's a takeaway right there. Absolutely. So we are always fighting what reality is, which causes our dysfunction. Wait, okay. So let's she, just... Do you see how she just dropped Tori? You just dropped that as if people understand that. <laughs> First she always gets me on to me about <laughs> let's break this down because you drop these gems and you know this is what happens because we do this for a living mm -hmm. we sometimes say things and don't realize that we are in the depths and the uh trenches of people's lives yes. Yes. and so we know what's happening mm -hmm. but tori first of all you need to make that a, a meme that needs to be on your instagram that is huge you said we are often fighting what life brings and that's what perpetuates the dysfunction yes. what does that mean help us understand that so hypothetically speaking working with a client most of the time my clients tell me within the first 15 to 20 minutes what the answer is am Man. i lying no <laughs> it is so true because we come in and we sit down and we start to break down what we're going through whether it's a relationship whether it's financial, whether it's, you know, um, trying to connect better with a certain entity that you're dealing with. It could be a myriad of things. I usually work with relationships. Mm -hmm. So it can be work related. It can be intimate. It can be parental. It can be um, spousal, whatever. And if the issue is pertaining to I don't communicate well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how to own my emotions, so I stuff them. Well, we got to figure out how to unstuff them. How do you unstuff them? Absolutely. But because of humans being so routine and used to having a pattern of behavior, being able to turn that person into a direction of you can change that behavior. That means acceptance. I got to first identify it. Can't yes. change what you don't identify. You cannot change what you don't identify. Right? Yes. So you identify I'm it. I'm nerding out. <laughs> you identify it and then you say, okay, why am I doing it this way? Now let me learn a different way. That's radical acceptance. Okay. So That's if y'all have been rocking with me, for those of you who have not been rocking with me for a long time, you may not know this, but Tori, people who've been following me for a while, they know one of my pulpits that I get up on is this idea of pausing and paying attention, mm. pausing and paying attention. And I say that over and over again, because what, what you just said, this is why I'm going to be nerding out with this conversation, because we often continue patterns of behavior because it's what we've always done is what we've always known. And we don't recognize you absolutely have the opportunity and the ability to course correct. Yes. But you keep doing the same thing. Okay. So you already dropped the gym. And so you work with people helping them to begin to accept first acknowledge and then accept what is happening. So they then can make different decisions. And then accept I can do something different. Because many times people come in and they don't even realize that they can choose differently. It's yes. almost like they feel in prison. Like this is the only way. No, no, no. We can figure out what we're doing. And like you said, course correct. Accept that there's a different option. And then practice it enough. Yes. So now it becomes a habit. So now it's a habit. Okay. So let me tell you this, girl. I love talking to uh, colleagues that I trust because can I tell you, there is this um, tug of war that I get in with my clients sometimes. And I own that because I'm often trying to help them realize you can let go of that dysfunction, yes. but it's become almost a crutch for them. And they're telling me they want to let it go, but they really don't because they're finding some comfort in it. Because people are afraid of change. Yes. And so when they've normalized this dysfunctional behavior, it may not even be comfortable to do. 
but it's what I know to do. It's no different than when the teacher says one plus two equals three. That is the way of that equation, equation right? Uh, but you don't realize, well, I can say three minus two is one, right? Yes. I can go backwards or yes. forwards. So no, we are now normalizing something. And in that normalization, we have what is called unrealistic peace. Wait, oh, sorry. <laughs> Ma'am, you just, okay, you're teaching me something. Can we talk about unrealistic peace? So here's unrealistic peace. And this is my term. I'm not going to say this is clinical. This She's is teaching me because I'm about to start using this it. This is something that I have witnessed personally and professionally. Mm -hmm. So you, you're trying to lose weight. You say you want to lose 15 pounds. You see a nutritionist. The nutritionist tells you, you got to lower your carbs. You got to increase your water and you got to move your body. Mm -hmm. All of that makes sense, right? Right. So you start, but then a crisis happens in your life. You and leave what do your you job. Do? Your boyfriend breaks up with you. Your dog dies. Yeah. You go back to that doggone dog Dunkin' Donut. Because it brings unrealistic peace. It's giving me this instant peace right now. Yeah. But this is not realistic to the goal that I set for myself. So it's unrealistic. Okay, I got peace for a moment. Oh, yes, it, I, I salivate at the thought of what it's going to taste like. And God forbid it's a Krispy Kreme hot donut, right? But once I eat that donut, now here comes the guilt. That peace gone. It's that gone. peace lasted maybe 15 to 30 seconds. As I enjoyed that Krispy Kreme. As I Kreme. enjoyed it. Or for y'all know, as I enjoyed my Pillsbury chocolate chip. Girl, you know what I call that? I love that term. And I have been calling it being lulled back into complacency. Yeah. Like something happened. That's why our why has to be big enough because we get lulled back. So I love that unrealistic piece. You're thinking this is what I'm grasping for because it's what I've always known. And that is what everyone struggling with an addiction, whether it's a person, a substance, a behavior, that's what they oh this is what i know this is what i know well you know it but it does not work it's not long lasting it's Ooh, not effective girl we haven't even gotten into motherhood martyrs and mental <laughs> we talk about mental health though so that's yeah. good Tori, that is so good okay so you said that you are like me we work with plenty of people but if we had to name the the people that we feel called to the most it is for you women it's women absolutely yeah. i yeah. i mean i i I did, um, you know how you do your values? You mm -hmm, figure out what your values mm -hmm. are. And when I did my values ex exercise and figured out what was important to me and I figured out how to like identify myself for me, Lord forgive me, it was woman, Christian, mm. black mm -hmm, woman, mm -hmm. black person. Wow. There's just something in my spirit that so connects with womanhood and motherhood. Yeah. Like motherhood to me is such a pivotal part of what made me more of myself. Yes, absolutely. Right? So to answer well, your question. Well, that's huge though. Wait a minute. Okay, Robin remembered that. Motherhood is what made me more of myself. Y'all, please make sure I come back and talk about that. But first, tell us about motherhood, about how many children you have. So I have three children. I birthed two, and then I have a bonus daughter with my current husband. I'm happily married second time. And mm -hmm. um, all girls. And when I tell you, I really came to know myself mm. when I had my children. My children have taught me so much yes. about me and all the little things that I got right and all the little things I got wrong mm -hmm. before I even became a mother. They have been able to kind of highlight that, to illuminate that to me. Yes. And I tell people all the time, the best way to love yourself is to love your children. Wow. Like, I love myself so much through loving them. Wow. Wow. And do you, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so I have to remember to come back to that. So I told you all that um, this conversation on motherhood, martyrs, and mental health really was solidified by you. You confirmed it for me. Um, she, Tori sent me, it's Dr. Tori to you. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's, it's Tori to her. <laughs> so listen, so Tori sent me a DM on Instagram of this video of a woman talking about motherhood. And when this episode airs, I'm gonna actually place that video in my stories. So make sure you're following me, follow me on Robin May online on Instagram, because I'm gonna post that video in my story so that we can get the discussion going. But that video was just talking about, oh y'all, you see how we keep it real, because this earring show did fall <laughs> out. And this is what happens when you're having conversations with your girlfriends. 
So that video toy was talking about the pressures and the weight that mothers are under. Mm -hmm. And one of the things it said was that women put ourselves last yes. on the list. When you listened to it again recently, she said what even the animal goes first. Even the dog before came the before her. She said children, spouse, pet, then yourself. Absolutely. And so that concerns me to say yes. the least. And I think as women, period, and definitely as mothers, we are exhausted. And so I want to kind of talk about that. I'm going to share something with you, Tori, that I don't think we have really talked about before. Mm -hmm. I have experienced something interesting on my therapeutic couch. For many, many years, there was a lot of conversation around daddy issues and yes. people having daddy issues and people needing to go to therapy because of daddy issues. But I have found it's mama issues. It is, I thought it was just me. No, no man. Girl. Y'all, no what is showing up in my, not just, uh, now again, let me say, just like Tori, my heart beats for women. I love working with women, but we see men as well. Yes. We see plenty, and I right. love couples as well. Right. And often with the women I am working with, the men too, I normally see it. Let me say this. Okay, let's just nerd out. I normally see the mommy issues, and I want us to try to define mommy issues. I see it show up in men as well. They often aren't as cognizant of their behavior is a reflection on their relationship with their, their mothers. Mother. They're not often as cognizant right, of it, right. but women are now being able to articulate their relationship with their mothers and its impact on them. So you're agreeing with me. Tell me what you've been Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. So from one range of an absent mother, like what that left, yes. that impact, like my mother wasn't there. And I'm not saying physically there, and emotionally, if you're listening to it on the podcast, I had to clap my hands because yes, an emotionally unavailable yes. mother, right? So the bandwidth goes from that all the way to a mother who just overly loves, just just cannot, no boundaries, enmeshed, has to be in every angle, yes, scene, yes. shot of their child's life. Wait, girl. Y'all, I love her. So first of all, Tori, this is going to make you so uncomfortable, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Y'all remember at the end of the last episode, I, I think, or maybe the end of the first episode, I told you I was having one of my girlfriends coming on. She's a therapist, and I didn't. I said, I don't want to say how her clients don't get distracted because she's so darn Aww. fly. I know that makes you uncomfortable, but she's so fly. If you're watching, listening to this podcast, you got to go look at it on YouTube. But Tori, I'm nerding out because what you just said just now, you are dropping so many gems and that's why I had you on. But you just said the mother who is so engaged, I love the visual you just created, that that mother has to be in every scene, every scene, every act of that child. And we're not just talking about the five-year-old child. We're talking about the 25-year-old child. The 50. 30, the 50 year old the child. 50 year old child. Yes. Because her identity is so caught up in this is the only thing that I can relate to that I did well or that I enjoyed. And let me say this. Nobody walking this earth has enjoyed and loved mothering more than I have. Mm -hmm. I could eat every ounce of my children and they are now 24 and 22 years old because my, my bonus daughter is 22 as well. So we have mm -hmm. two 22-year-olds and a 24-year-old. But I'm so grateful from my training Mm -hmm. and my children modeling back to me, you got to let me go. Yes. It's it's time for me to get out here and create my own footprint. Yes. And I need space. And because of my training, I knew, let me step back. Okay, first of all, this is so good because Tori, you are one of the moms that I watch and admire. Because one of my biggest, let me be vulnerable here for a moment. So the first episode I did for this podcast, mm -hmm. Tori, I shared my perspective of motherhood. And it, it's very difficult for me to share my perspective because I believe sometimes it could land as if I am saying that my children aren't my number one priority. And if anybody knows me, they know that they, they are. are. God, yes. Anybody who really knows me, right. but as I communicate it, 
sometimes I believe it could land differently than, than that because what I'm saying is that very thing right there, that they are my number one priority, but they aren't my only yes. priority. Yes. That they are my heartbeats, but I have other passions as yes. well. And I quite frankly want to model that for them. Yes. But I'm figuring it out. My yeah. daughter, my oldest is only 16 and my baby is nine. Yeah. And so Tori, you and my, my, so many women, so many women, but as far as this podcast, you and uh, my bestie who was on here, y'all are such inspirations for me and particularly you mm. because of the ages of your daughters, because my biggest prayer and y'all, I'll start crying here on this podcast. My biggest prayer is that when my girls are 22 and 24, that they consider me their best friend, mm -hmm. that, that we we hang out, that we mm -hmm. enjoy one. And when I say best friend, I want them to have friends they age yes. because that's another issue. Right. But right. I want to be, yes. and I see that with your girls. Yes. And so when I hear you say that, I think that is huge. That you had to, as Die much back. as you love them. I had to bring it back. And when did you start to realize that that was necessary, that you were needing to do that? So my children are Haley, Jordan, and Tori. My bonus child, her name is Tori. Girl, which is crazy. I know, right? Um, when Haley got to be in 10th grade, I think it was, she wanted to go into ROTC. I didn't see that for her at all. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just thinking it's an elective yeah. thing, You're right? And then she started moving up very quickly in it. And the teachers started really talking to her. And my husband, being ex-military, started really talking to her about a future in it. And I was like, this isn't what I... I. And I had enough memory of my time going to college and my relationship mm -hmm. with my mother. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I'm not going to tell her who she is. Ooh. I'm going to let her find out who she is. Wait, Tori. Okay, this is not supposed to be therapy for me. This is not why. Tori, I did not bring you on here for me to have to a therapy session. You, right? Girl, you just jacked me up. You just jacked me up. You just mm. said, it is not my job to tell her who she is. It is my job to allow her to figure out. And we create the environment to give them the courage to do it, to do it. We get to create the environment and something as simple for me, even giving them the courage and the environment to figure out how they want to dress yes. to what their style is yes. to like taking. And, and I'm going to get to this in just a minute because so often we project our own insecurities onto yes. our children yes. and we don't even realize. Yes. Okay. So you started, realizing wait a minute she's about to go down a lane that i didn't that i'm totally unfamiliar with didn't foresee it coming and she was like i want to go in the military she goes i'm going to college but i want the military to fund it she literally i had worked my tail off to get to a place financially where i could send her to college yes she's like i don't want you to pay for me to go to college <laughs> mama i saw you work your butt off i saw you get a doctorate later in life i'm not going to add to that burden Right, girl, and I'm sitting here saying it's not a burden. Let me do this for you, and she's yes. like, mm -mm. "And what? Talk about what she's doing now." She's a cybersecurity, and she is 23. Will be 24 in June, making way more than I ever made at girl. 22, 23 years old. Girl, paying her way through school in reserve and works at Fort Benning. Now it's called Fort Moore. Ryan May, are you interested in going? <laughs> Reagan, Riley, let me know if you're interested. I love that. And so I hope as you're watching this and you're listening to this, if you are a mom and you find yourself being that mom that is not giving their child the space, the space, the space and there's a reason and you started getting into that. And so I'm going to bring it back. But first, I was asking you, and you agreed, and I want us to talk about that a little bit more, about what we're seeing in our office, that you said anywhere from the spectrum of an absent, an absent mom, mom mm -hmm. who can still, you, your mom could be, have been in the house, but she could have been emotionally, emotionally absent, right? All the way up to a mother that just cannot create effective boundaries. Absolutely. Just, her identity is just that child. Her, the child's identity really becomes the mother's identity. Absolutely. Y'all yeah. heard me talk about yeah. that idea of enmeshment yes. during episode one. And so what Tori and I are seeing 
are women who are coming to a realization of their relationships with their mom and how that's impacting them in adulthood mm -hmm. with adult friendships, mm -hmm. with romantic relationships, with um, how they view themselves. And so I want to try to, this idea of mommy issues is not a clinical term. Right. And so I looked up, I was like, what are some of the indicators? I'm gonna give you some of the symptoms of mm. this idea of mommy issues. Again, that there was some type of dynamic with your mother, you and your relationship with your mother that's showing up in your life. Mm. Now, let me say this. I talk about this all the time, Tori. I tell my clients that in every area of our life, we are either trying to repeat what we saw growing up mm. or we're trying to get as far away from what yes. we saw growing up. And yes. many times we're doing a combination of them both. Right. So for example, I tell people all the time when it comes to how my mother mothered, I see myself trying to repeat a lot of that, but maybe how I saw, even though she was a dope wife as well, but maybe some of her dynamics as a wife, I'm trying to do the opposite. Right. You know, my dad might have said, let's, in heaven my dad might have said your mama was always nagging so what i'm trying to do is do the exact opposite, opposite of right, that right so do y'all understand what i mean by that and so these are some of the symptoms that sometimes show up with people who've had this interesting relationship with their mom but even if your relationship with your mom was beautiful it was no problem she still is impacting you yes she still is she's having an impact the, on you. She's, she's the blueprint. Like yes. she's the origin. Like we talk about the PO, the point of origin. Like it starts there. You heard her heartbeat before you heard your own. You could hear inside your mother, her thoughts, yes. her feelings, her fears, her insecurities. You, you, you ingested, digested that. Yes before you even knew who you were. So yes. yeah. You know, the medical field is starting to even understand the deep impact of what you just said, even how the mother processed her pregnancy, the, the reality of that child's birth. Okay. So I want you to understand, even if you're saying, I don't have mommy issues, just know that even if your mother was, um, uh, who on the Cosby, Felicia Rashad, even Claire, 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 even if your mama was Claire, even that you could be saying there was a standard that I could never meet. Yeah. So I just want us to pause yes. long enough to pay attention. But here are some of the uh, characteristics. It said, you may have mommy issues if you have an inability experiencing deep connections. That's kind of that absent, emotionally absent yes. mom. You are overly clingy. You are unaffectionate. Mm. This is a huge one. Watch this you are overly critical yes that yes, overly Lord. critical mom plays a part or you are oh you struggle with being overly dependent mm -hmm. on others mm -hmm. these are some ideas so the inability to experience deep connections and i want you to talk about attachment issues in yes. just a minute clingy and that's often because your mom didn't give you space to explore or to make mistakes yes. or to take risks. Mm -hmm. um, you're unaffectionate. Your mom didn't show a lot, a lot of that. Or you might need too much affection because yeah. yes. your mom was overly affectionate. That critical, like I said, overly critical and dependent, overly right. dependent. Because I often ask my clients, um, Tori, when I hear them being very critical of themselves, I ask them, where does that come from? Where's that voice? Whose voice? Is that your voice? Is that your mother's voice? Like who's? Yeah, I and do it that. Is yes. Often their mother's, their mother's voice. voice. Yeah. Sis, I know. I already know. I am jumping in right when it's getting good. That just means you got to come back next week for part two of my conversation with Dr. Tori. Girl, it just keeps getting better and better. So I will see you next week. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Intentional Conversations with Robin May and friends. Listen, these conversations are to help you live intentionally, fully engaged, to help you elevate not just what you do, but who you are. And listen, I am committed to being in the trenches with you. If you haven't already, make sure you head on over to youcanlivelife.com slash academy. Yes, girl, the Academy doors are open. This is where you get to dive into further conversations on our podcast topics. We get to dive into the trenches of the life course, the course that I have created to help you create the life that you long for. And we get to have 
monthly office hours where you can ask me any questions you have about all of this. Girl, Life Academy is where we can do life together. So head on over to youcanlivelife.com slash academy.